Hey guys, it's Mrs. Richardson, and this is our next installment of Flipped Classroom. And because of all these goofy snow days that we've having, I, 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 the only way we could get through this material is if you did the notes at home so we can play the Oregon Trail game. So that's why you're doing this at home this week. But we're, we're talking about Chapter 11, Section 1, Trails to the West. And we're going to talk about three different trails that led a lot of people um, to move west. So here we go. Um, fur companies began moving west to hunt. Now, the beaver hat or the beaver fur hat was very fashionable. People in France liked to wear this hat, men, that was lined with the beaver fur. Beaver fur is very waterproof. It has a lot of oil to it. Um, so I guess not only was it fashionable, but it was also functional. So uh, a lot of places out east, uh, the beaver were overhunted, so it was getting harder and harder to trap beaver. And as that happened, the, the trappers are going to move with the beaver. And so they moved farther uh, west to trap uh, more fur. Many of the first non-Native Americans who traveled west were fur trappers and traders. These men were known as mountain men, uh, men looking for adventure and wealth. They were burly men that liked to be outdoors and, and live by themselves. They lived a very isolated life. They did interact with uh, Native Americans and even learned some of the Native American customs, wore some of the Native American clothing, um, and sometimes the men did w uh, marry some of the Native American women. But the, the mountain men and the Native Americans um, got along on a, on a fairly good basis, and really that was their only, for the mountain men, their only socialization. So in 1811, one of the first fur trading posts was started near the mouth of the Columbia River, the Astor Fur Company. And because of this, um, more, more interest uh, moved west. But there was a problem because Britain, Russia, and Spain all claimed this land. So not only did the United States say, hey, we, we claim this land, but you've got three other countries that are trying to say, hey, we own this land too. Um, and this is going to cause a problem. So eventually, the United States made some treaties with um, Spain and Russia, and they decide to give up their claims. So uh, they essentially leave the area. Uh, Russia goes farther up north. Russia still owns uh, what is now Alaska today, so they're not too far north. But in, And then Spain backs out. They pretty much drop back to the southwest part of the United States and into Mexico and just concentrate on those areas. Now we still have Britain. So we, we had another treaty with Britain, and this treaty allowed both the United States and Britain to occupy this region. This region that I'm discussing is the Oregon Territory, and we'll look at a map in a second, um, but it was the present-day states of Washington and Oregon. By the late 1840s, the fur trading declined. The fur hats weren't as popular anymore. They weren't in fashion. Plus, the beaver was becoming overhunted, and it was becoming more and more difficult to find um, decent beaver fur. Some mountain men, because of this, moved back east, and they started sharing their stories of their adventure and, and what what opportunities were out west and this got a lot of Americans thinking you know what I can go out west and start a better life for myself and my family so this sounded pretty good to them and they were inspired to move west the big thing that they were looking for not only land but they wanted the, the riches of the resources uh, available out west and the mild climate. Washington State and Oregon State have a much milder climate than um, here in Missouri. Yeah, up in the upper elevations, um, they do get snow. Uh, they definitely get a lot of rain out there, so I'm not, I'd love to visit out, out I have not been to those two states. I'd like to visit, but I don't think I could live out there with all the rain. I need, I need some sunshine. So the big thing the people wanted when they moved over the Oregon Trail was land, resources, and a nice climate. So we're going to our first trail, and this is the Oregon Trail. And some of you have played the game, and we're going to play the paper, play the paper version in our class. But you need to have a little background about that. So here we go. Here's our map. It is a 2,000-mile-long journey from Independence, Missouri, 
west to Oregon country. So Independence is right about here. And um, it follows some rivers, eventually over the, uh, over the Rocky Mountains. Yes, they have to cross the, the mountains. And then on into Oregon country. Oregon country is uh, part of Canada, today's Canada. And then like I said, uh, present state of Washington and Oregon, uh, a little bit of Montana and Wyoming. The tra uh, trail followed the rivers, the plains, the Rocky Mountains. It was de dangerous and difficult. They had to leave in late spring, and then um, so they wanted to leave after. You know how in the springtime we get a lot of rain. Well, they wanted to wait until those big heavy rain periods were done because you got to remember they're traveling by, and I said not horse, but they're tra using oxen and covered wagons to travel this 2,000 mile uh, journey. There are no roads, there are no highways, nothing's paved. They have to travel over dirt. And when it's wet and muddy, it's much more difficult to travel. It took about six months, and they absolutely had to get through those Rocky Mountains before the winter. They did not want to get stuck in the Rocky Mountains uh, when it started snowing or became um, too cold. We're gonna find out about a little party group of, gr group of wagon trains that did get stuck in the Rocky Mountains during uh, the winter, and we're going to find out what happened to them. Hint, hint, the Donner Party, if you've ever uh, heard about them. Cost about $600 per family to travel um, west. Now, the average family made about a $1.50 per month, so you, you can imagine that this was a very difficult um, task to raise $600 and get ready for this big, huge journey. They traveled in wagon trains. They weren't the wagons are not all connected, but um, each family would have their own wagon, their own oxen, and some other things. We'll find out tomorrow or when we play the game uh, what things you're going to need to travel. They could have ten to several dozen wagons following each other, and they did this mainly for protection. It was better to travel in a group. Um, there were some problems with Native American attacks. There, we're to, I've talked to you guys about the buffalo coming running through. Um, so it was better just to, to travel in a, in a group of people. They faced a lot of hardships. One of the biggest hardships that they faced on the travel was illness, uh, cholera, um, and other illnesses. Cholera uh, is, is a bacterial infection caused by drinking um, polluted water, and you could die from uh, dehydration and severe diarrhea. That's lovely. Um, but illness was the number one reason why people died um, on the trail. Obviously, there's going to be accidents. There's going to be broken bones. They're going to run low on food. Uh, sometimes they run low on supplies. There were forts along the way that they could stop and resupply, and, and you'll learn about that in the game. Um, another problem that they had <coughs> was the bad weather. They're out in the middle of you know nowhere, and all they have is their wagon to protect them. And think about being in a wagon during a thunderstorm and hail and tornadoes. Mm, I don't think that would be such a great idea. Um, the link that I have right there, if you want to copy it down, is a link to a video on YouTube that uh, uh, it was actually a school project by a student, not one of my students, but very good that shows all the hardships of uh, the Oregon Trail. And if we have time in class, I will show that to you. But if, if you're curious, there's the link and you can go to it. You know what, I think I'll go ahead and put this PowerPoint also on my uh, school calendar on the on my webpage. That way you can have the PowerPoint and then you'll have the link and you can just link on that directly to the uh, YouTube. Moving on. Our next trail that we're talking about is the Santa Fe Trail. And this trail once again starts in Missouri. It starts in Independence. This is going to go southwest into Santa Fe, New Mexico. And the people who went on this trail were mainly going to make money. They were following an ancient trading, ancient, ancient Native American trading routes. And um, like I said, they're going down and taking um, trade products with them in order to make big profits. So um, these aren't families that are generally going to Santa Fe, but more of, of I guess you could say, businessmen uh, wanting to wanting adventure and to make profits. It was not an easy travel. None of these journeys are, are easy. Um, if you've been down to New Mexico, it's very different from Missouri. Uh, the climate is very dry. It's desert-like. Um, 
not as green as in Missouri. So they had to cut through the mountains. They have to go through deserts. So it was a dangerous journey, but they stood to make some pretty good profits um, if they were successful. The last trail that we're going to talk about is the Mormon Trail. And this is a group of religious people that um, were traveling and trying to locate in a place where they could practice their religion freely. They started off in New York, and this map doesn't show it. Eventually, they, because of some of their religious practices and views, they were kicked out of New York, or well, the, re the region they were in, settled in this region, or in this city called Nauvoo, Illinois, so not too far from St. Louis, St. Charles. Eventually, because, again, religious persecution, they decided to move west. Um, they did follow the, the Oregon Trail for a little bit, and then they cut off, and they, they heard about this beautiful region um, in Utah and, and um, the, the Salt Lake, the Great Salt Lake. Uh, it, it's great for skiing. Um, I've flown over it. I haven't been there, but it, uh, if you're an outdoorsman and like to do things outdoor, great, uh, Salt Lake City is an awesome place to go. So they settled there, um, and thousands of Mormons took this trail. And so even today, the state of Utah has a lot of Mormon influence. Um, Brigham Young University, Brigham Young was one of the founders. Um, he took over after the, the first founder was uh, uh, murdered. Um, but Brigham Young University is out there, and um, so there's a, a great influence um, in Utah because of the Mormons. All right, so that's our three trails, very different. One Oregon Trail, people are going out there to uh, start a new life. The Santa Fe Trail, people are going down there to make money. And the Mormon Trail, people are going out there to, uh, to practice a religion freely. Okay, hope this was a little better this time. Thanks, guys.